Blitz football analyst Dusty Dvorak joins us live in studio. Let's talk some college football, and we'll start with this. Lots of new faces in Norman and Stillwater. Let's start with OU. Who's caught your eye? Well, how about some new faces for the summer? A couple wide receivers. Jaquez Petaway, former top 10 wide receiver in the country out of Houston. He's here now. And also the Texas transfer, Brennan Thompson. Track speed. Guy won the 200 meters in Texas as a junior. These guys both have speed. They could take the top off a of defense. And that's huge for this offense. So much of this offense is about explosive plays vertically down the field. So a big summer for both these guys, not just with Schmitty, but also in the summertime, seven on seven, getting acclimated with the other receivers. Sooners need more explosiveness at the wide receiver spot, and there's a real opportunity for both these guys here this summer. And also, the offensive lineman, Stanford transfer, Walter Rouse. He's back from his December shoulder surgery, going to be back working with these guys over the summer. He's going to be the key at left tackle for the O-line. Big to get him back this summer, Dean. Well, incoming freshman this summer, there you see Samuel. Help me with the pronunciation of that, if you <laughs> Almost do eagle. know. There you go, receiver. Bam. You talk about Pettaway. He can run. And DB Jacoby Johnson, we know about his ability. A new transfer since the spring game. Receiver Brendan Thompson, the speedster, and O-lineman Troy Everett. And you know, OU lost some uh, lost some guys. We'll, we'll talk about that later. John, go ahead. Well, at OSU, I caught up with Mike Gundy at the Coaches vs. Cancer Golf Tournament last Monday and asked him what he thought the best thing to come out of spring ball was. He immediately said team chemistry, and he joked that there were so many new guys running around and other guys who, hadn't, who had changed numbers that for two weeks he didn't know who anyone was. He really does. <laughs> uh, does to, as They're all called numbers anyway, yeah, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. So uh, some of that's uh, some players that we know, but they've changed numbers from last season. They really have. And look, that's exactly why I want to mention this guy, because though he's got a new number, he's not a new face. And nobody should forget about Jaden Bray. I believe the Norman product is ready to explode this upcoming season at wide receiver for Oklahoma State. He looked like a different player this spring. Was out there. He had size, strength, moving around different. He really has good ball skills and instincts, but he's got to be able to stay healthy. He missed all but three games last year. I think working with Coach Glass to get his body as healthy as possible is going to be big this summer. Also excited about the big man, the defensive tackle, Justin Kirkland. He's 6'4", 345 plus. He can move him inside. They have this new three-man front, and it's going to be a key piece for Coach Dardo's defense. Kirkland, he's been at Utah Tech. This is his first taste the Cowboys summer program. I think it could be really big for him, guys. Well, they love him, no doubt about it, and want to keep him healthy, of course. True freshman, linebacker Cam Franklin. You've got defensive lineman Jadon Foreman and wide receiver Tyke Andrews out of uh, Enid. And the transfers, the offensive tackle Dalton Cooper out of Texas State, but originally from the state of Oklahoma, and tight end Ian Edenfield. And again, those tight ends, guys, they're going to use them in a more traditional fashion where they're doing a lot of blocking to help fortify the run game and then kind of sneak up on you when they throw them the ball. Yeah. All right, let's move to the ACC where there appears to be some unrest. News this week that seven schools have met with lawyers to look into the potential of breaking away from the conference. What's really going on here? Money, money, money. Look, these seven AC schools, they're not happy with their current TV media rights deal that's set to run through 2036. The deal the ACC signed just a handful of years ago is already a bad deal. And the money is going to pale in comparison to the SEC and Big Ten new deals. They kick in in 2024. Look, these schools are looking to do whatever they can to create new dollars. Their threats are the seven teams could potentially succeed from the league. They could talk with the ACC and dissolve and start a new league. And there's even been some hope that ESPN could just give them some more money, sweeten the deal to close that gap. The reality is none of these are probably going to happen. If any team wants to get out of the current deal, they're going to have to pay 120 mil just to get out of the league. And then they're also going to forfeit their future TV rights. They could litigate that, but it's a mess. Florida State and Clemson are the biggest names in the ACC, and they want more. They both feel that they are two of college football's biggest and best brands, and they should be financially reflected as such. Expect a merit-based model for college football playoff appearances. They're not going to spread that pie no more. You're going to eat what you kill in the ACC. Also, I can't imagine there's a lot of trust at this point between these teams, guys. No, and, you know, doing deals that far into the future is a gamble. Yes. I mean, it may look like a ton at the time, but you're talking, you didn't misspeak. It wasn't 2026. 20, 2036 is what Dusty said. It, that, that is correct when that uh, deal runs out. Um, plus, how many is too many for a conference? I would think that 18 is 
pretty full. I mean, think about it. You got one chance in 18 of winning the league. I mean, you know, socialistically, I think we can say that. But uh, otherwise, uh, we may see teams that we may see conferences that have 20 and 22. Yep. We don't we don't need that. We don't Maybe think we three need big conferences. Yeah, we, we don't think we need it right now. What's this going to look like in five years again? And, and does anyone really? I mean, look, look, the Big 12, as it has been the case, as we talked about the Pac-12, is positioned to where if the right teams actually do break away, they're going to say, "Hey, come on over." They feel like it strengthens them. The Big 12 is in as good a position as anybody not named Big 10 or SEC. Yeah, I mean, they're the next best league. How about this? How about here? ACC the next, thinks they are. In the next yeah. couple of years, though. UCF's going to be making more than Miami and Florida State yeah. here in the Big 12 and what they're making in the ACC. Well, Gosh. Big 12 has a, a Wheeler dealer working for him now. Yes, I don't know do. the guy yet, but uh, he's done some good things. He has really advanced it. All right, up next, Dusty, thank you, by the way. That